All right, you want to do some kind of some kind of intro for the tour? I think we could. <laughs> no, 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 dude. You sure? No. All right. Uh, it's way too spicy even for Grantham. Are you ready, man? Yeah. Good. Right, let's go, dude. Where am I? The staff of Moses. The sling of David. The hair of Samson. Go forth, my Gentile. Shapiro! Today on Grantham, what shouldn't be a controversial video, but might be, the IWI X95. Now, I know people are gonna argue about this, they're gonna say weird things, but you know what, here on Grantham, we are just about reviewing guns. No politics, no, politics. no jokes at all, um, nothing weird or anything like that. We're just here to present to you the facts. So today on Grantham, we're gonna be reviewing the X95, giving you our unadulterated opinions uh, and doing the, uh, the best that we absolutely can. I'm excited to see how Kanye's uh, favorite gun is gonna turn out. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is Doors Rowing Institute. Sonoran Desert Institute. It gets worse every time. The Sonoran Desert Institute. Very good. So if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. Go and give them a look-see. They are awesome. We can't thank them enough. And we of course can't thank enough who? Primary Micah. Arms. Damn. Oh, oh, nice. Primary Arms because every time you order from them, they give you caramel corn. They sure do, it's caramel corn uh, January. Real talk, awesome optics, great prices, we can't thank them enough. But before we get into the full review, uh, we have to do our full disclosure. So um, IWI uh, did provide this rifle, I did ask for it, I wanted to do a review on it. Prior to this, we have done a review of the Galil Ace, also provided by IWI. All ammunition was provided by AAC. There was no exchange of money or anything like that um, when it comes to IWI, so that is a relationship there. I have talked with the engineers about a few of the issues that I had with this rifle um, in the course of this review, so understand that there is that connection there. But um, as always, we don't pull punches and we are as uh, fair as we can be when we do our reviews. Is that how we say it? Yep. Talk is cheap, ammunition is what? Expensive. Let's do it. Start with the build drill. If you're not familiar with the build drill, that is going to be uh, six rounds. Uh, we want to say under two seconds. There's a lot. It's, there's a lot of points of contention in the past when it comes to whose foot is where. So I'm just solving that now. He's scared. Uh, six rounds, two seconds, uh, all in the A zone. Okay, what? Just like against the line? That's the reason I made it. Damn bot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! He's scared. Great dog. <laughs> ah. uh, try number two. Yeah. Stand by. Uh, feed at, or aim at the base of the target, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, Stand by. I'm aiming at this target. Seven. There's seven. One, six, zero. Uh, all A zone. DQ'd. So if he was not DQ'd, it'd be a one, four, six. Four, six. I'll take it. Oh, wow. I could already tell this rifle is inferior. Jesus. Oh, let me just see. Do you have this on instant? Oh, good. All right. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. Uh, hey, Amy, at the base of target, boss. Yeah, you're okay. actually. That's fine. Actually, that's fine. No. He was actually fucked no. with me. Let but me know. He actually let can't. Me know. Yeah. That's good. Let me know. You know what I mean? I'm ready to do it the first time, though. Stand by. One, four, five. Let's Somehow take, I still felt like yours was quicker. Let's take a look at his uh, 
is a group there. Look at his group, you know, 0.01 faster. That being said, all right. Now, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, realize that this is this is still. I'm still killing the guy. It was faster at that 0.01 makes a difference. So, and I did it first try, I didn't get any practice. Let's go ahead, Micah, you're up. All right. Micah, you understand the course fire? Yep. Shooter ready, stand by. That was horrible. Let's go take a look. Wait, 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 wait. Was it supposed to be five or six? Six. Wait, let me do it again. No. The bill drill was five rounds? Yeah, because Bill has five letters. We have been doing bill drills for years. Listen, dude, my hands are cold. I've been holding the camera. Damn. All right, so I guess Micah gets to do it again. Yep, yep, Stand they by. get two tries. One, five, three. That's a good group, though. That's a good group. Uh, do we count that as a line break as an alpha? I'm up next. Yeah, because we're just going to go back. So that's how many rounds it takes Micah to do a build drill. That's how many rounds it takes me to do a build drill. And he did it twice, but. Okay, Mozambique is uh, two to the chest, one to the head. Say, I don't like the safety uh, actuation. Slower. Well, as a Gentile, no one cares about your opinion. Shooter, are you ready? Yeah. Stand by. One, two, two. Okay, I, I hide over bore. I completely put it like right here. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Like a highest barrel. What are you talking about? <laughs> Stand by. God damn. No, no, the magazine release is up there. <laughs> Why would- <laughs> They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. <laughs> oh, oh here, here you go, Charles. Shooter was not ready. Just everything about that. Shooter, are you ready? Shooter ready, stand by. Ah. All right, we'll let the uh, audience decide on this one. That's okay. It's above the neck. I'll, I'll give it to him. It's not a credit card. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got in your head. I think I was like, oh, hide over so you aimed way low. It's like you knew what I was thinking. Yeah. Like you were inside me. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's I think it's also because how many how many rounds do you think you have on this weapon? Uh approximately twelve. Yeah, same here. How many rounds do you got? That's fun. The audience, everyone's having fun right now. <laughs> Damn by? Yeah. Oh my 105 oh spicy. My Lord. Nice. Oh. Was that good? I really. One, one zero five. So we, we get a pick. Yeah. Three three drill. Out there. Out there. Oh, okay. Micah Let's shines. This is okay, the we're doing three three drill. drill. Is it really the soul crusher drill though? Yeah. You want to explain the three three drill? Uh, three three drill is 40, 50 yards. Yeah. Three rounds in under three seconds. Stand by. Yep. Oh, get. Two five three. Still got Still it. Pass. Still pass. Still pass. pass. Uh, a couple follow-up shots there. Wasn't my best moment. All right, let me check the hold like Mike did. Stand by. Nice, 2 4 oh. Plenty of time. Plenty Easy. of time. Take your time. Here comes Mike at a crush. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. 206. Did you did you actually make the shot that quick off the beep or did you anticipate? No, I made the shot that quick. So but like normal, I want a second try. So Whoa! <laughs> no. Come on! No, no, you got it. You, you beat all of us in time. We're gonna do a uh, transition drill. It's gonna be two on one target, two on the other target. I have to do this because Charles is uh, incapable of letting me win drills. So on this particular target, we do have a round out and a round high right there. So uh, two on uh, A zone, two on A zone. What's the, what's the penalty if we get one uh, in C zone? Uh, probably just us talking shit to each other. <laughs> Ooh, whiffed him. That was a one five four, and let's go give him his penalty. So as dude, you can thank see, thank God, yeah. honestly. Guess Ooh. Grantham. You can't win them all, dude. One seven three. Nice. All clean. in. Yeah, clean. Nice and clean. All right, Micah. All right, redemption arc. That's a huge jacket. It's like that puffy jacket that is George that Costanza what did it? Is has. Is that what messed in, you uh, up? What, the, jacket? the jacket? Seinfeld. Got it. Yeah. That's what did it. Yeah, and I don't like this button either. It it's, it's constricting. That's like, it. That's a nice... Uh, I think those pants might be a little restricted too. Hey, can you show, show us your t-shirt? Damn. Are you calling me a weeb right no, now? No, I didn't say that Why at all. Why would you want me to show you the t-shirt? I, I like anime. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> 176. Did I win? No, I got 173. You beat me. I'll take it. I'll take it. Honestly? 
Shalom. All right, we just finished up on the range. We're to our talking portion of the review. The best way I could get, describe the Tavor, the X95, is that it is the best, worst bullpup that we've used. Um, and that's kind of harder to quantify, and that's why we're going to go through it. I'm going to explain my reasoning behind it. Uh, but there's a lot of really, really good things about the X95, and there's a lot of very odd quirks that makes this gun um, kind of to the point of being somewhat unusable in a, uh, what I consider like an armed citizen or, or a more professional role. So we'll talk about that. Obviously this is used professionally. This is used um, by both um, the Israeli military as well as by various law enforcement agencies, various militaries around the world. Um, it is a ubiquitous weapon, meaning it's everywhere. We're gonna go down this gun. We're gonna go tip to butt like we always do and talk about it and talk about what makes it good and what makes it bad. So we start right up at the tip of the gun right here. It is a 16 inch barrel. We do have a standard A2 birdcage flash hider. The question being why am I not running some type of uh, suppressor mount like a uh, Surefire or a Kima or whatever. And that's kind of the first main kind of contention I have with the X95 is that the, the system uh, isn't adjustable, which is fine. Like an AR-15 isn't an adjustable gas system. But the problem that comes into play with the Tavor is that the X-95 is so overgassed, so massively overgassed that if you suppress this weapon with a traditional baffled uh, design, like a Surefire or something like that, the, the pressure generated by the system is going to be so high that you're going to uh, wreck your weapon very quickly. And the gas blowback will also be horrible. Um, Sage Dynamics talked about it a bit and I absolutely agree with them. And uh, I had a buddy who actually put a surefire suppressor on it and, uh, and it killed his gun in about 4,000 rounds. So these weapons really aren't made to be suppressed. And you might think that's hearsay, that's some bullshit that I'm making up, but I actually talked to the engineers and the answer that they had as far as why it didn't have an adjustable gas system or wasn't uh, kind of able to be suppressed in a traditional sense was that uh, the Israelis just uh, they weren't thinking about running a suppressor on this when they designed it. Um, I think that is a design error. I, I think that they should come out with an adjustable system for this so that a suppressor can be run. Because as it stands right now, the only types of suppressors that can be run on the X95 are flow-through designs or something like that. Um, so if you have a flow-through design, great. But otherwise, um, you know, you're not going to be able to run a suppressor on it. And then you're looking at like a year-long wait time to, to get a suppressor for one specific weapon. I do like a lot of the flow-through suppressors like the Huxworks um, slash OSS cans. But um, it's just kind of, a, it's kind of a pain that right off the bat you can't suppress this weapon. Because being such a short package, um, again, this is about the size of a Mark 18. It would be cool. It would be awesome to be able to just natively have a, a suppressor that could run on there. Frustrating for me. Um, I will say, so going down to the barrel, the barrel is cold hammer forged. It is an Israeli made barrel. They're one seven twist. I have no problems with barrel. The X95, well, bullpups in general are not the most accurate systems. And that's not me saying that they're, they're incapable of making shots because indeed I have made uh, 640 yard shots with this particular Tavor. It is more than capable uh, of making those, those shots. It is a, uh, what you call a combat accurate weapon, about a two and a half to three MOA gun in my, uh, for my testing. Uh, with good ammo, I'm getting around two to two and a half. So it can certainly do those long shots, but you, know, you compare it to uh, some of the more modern AR-15s that we have, which are easily capable of sub MOA with good ammunition. Um, it is somewhat of a, of a kind of step back in terms of accuracy. But I'll concede and say that they are more than capable of making those, those long range shots. It's just, you have to try a little bit harder because obviously two MOA at 100 is going to equal uh, four MOA at 200 and so on and so forth. So your kind of margin for error is a lot larger than what you'd have from say an AR-15. Um, is that a problem for you? It kind of depends. The, the Tavor is certainly a compact weapon, so it might be more of an entry weapon where you're not making those longer shots. Um, it's just something to be aware of. Uh, one thing that I've heard from many Tavor users and X95 users is this little nut right up here that kind of shrouds the barrel, keeps a lot of uh, dirt from ingressing in. You can remove it and that does increase accuracy a little bit because it allows the barrel to flex a little bit more. Moving from the barrel, moving from all of that, we do have the handguard. Uh, obviously, it typically comes with handguard covers. I took those right off because I wanted to be able to use the Picatinny. There are a, a bunch of different replacements for the handguard that you can get. We're trying to run this thing mostly stock, so we have the stock handguard on here. 
I really don't have um, a whole lot of qualms with this. The only kind of real problem that you run into when it comes to the X95 is that you have to uh, definitely rethink how you're going to be setting up your weapon because uh, it's obviously not anything like an AR-15. In this case, what we've done is we have an end goal on top with a light on the side. The light, uh, we have that um, pressure pad running down to the vert grip right here. The reason I'm running a vert grip is on this guy right here when if I was to grip it, it would kind of be an odd angle on my wrist for me personally. So I like having the grip as a more natural angle on this particular weapon. So I have the pressure pad on the right side because I'm a right-handed shooter, therefore my left hand is wrapping around. If I need to actuate it, I can hit that pressure pad. For the end gall, that was a little bit more kind of tricky. I ended up putting the pressure pad just right below the end gall right there. That allows me to activate it pretty easily to be able to get to it, as you can see right there. And that works out. That's how I like having my setup. You could obviously pad the light on the same side, you could have a you know clicky uh, tail cap and be able to get to it. I like having that kind of whole side open because I like to run my sling right up there. The one thing I really do like is that they do have the QD mounts right out here. That makes it a lot easier for mounting your sling. Uh, no issues as far as the QD mounts are going. So moving back from the handguard, we do have the optics rail right up here. Solid, uh, good zero. I have seen no loss of zero in the entire time I've used this rifle. Uh, with the end gall, it's been awesome. And then with the optic right here, we. Uh, using a Leupold Mark VI uh, and a Scalar Works mount, and it's been absolutely awesome as far as holding zero. So no issues with the with the rails. Obviously, you do have built-in um, uh, backup sights in the rails themselves. I, I don't really end up using them because I just really don't need them. But they, you do have a rear one right here, and you have the front one, which is currently covered by my end gall. Hence, I, I just there's kind of a premium for rail space as far as optics are concerned because obviously your your face is going to be going right here so not being able to utilize that very front portion wasn't really an option for me uh, that's why I covered the the front sight so not really something I'm too concerned about but if you really wanted to have those uh, backup sights and you had the rail space you're not running a uh, any type of laser aiming module for night vision or anything like that totally fine charging handle is pretty interesting obviously everything is ambidextrous so you can switch both sides that presents a few problems, which we'll talk about in just a second here. Um, I do like the charging handle. It's very FAL-like, which is that I can always actuate it on this side right here. As you pull back on it, it kind of cantilevers into position. And it's very easy to, to run. It's a very smooth weapon. When you're clearing any type of malfunctions, because of the way the bolt lock function works on this guy, what I typically recommend is the bolt release is just right there, and it's very easy to release that. So on a typical AR-15, typically you lock the bolt back and you clear the malfunction. Because it's so easy when you're going back there to drop that bolt on your finger, you don't want to do that. Typically what I'm going to recommend and what has been recommended by other Tavor trainers is to actually hold that to the rear, clear the malfunction with your fingers at that point. Once you're good, release it uh, to ensure that you don't get your poor fingers because that's a, that's a sad day. Now when it comes to the controls on the Tavor, um, I think it's probably some of the best controls when it comes to a bullpup rifle, especially when you compare it to weapons like the AUG, which not great controls at all. So they're very AR-15-like. The magazine release is right up here. So we have a mag in there. It's very AR-15-like in that I can simply drop that magazine right out. It is ambi on both sides right here. The fire control, as far as the selector, it's right there, just like any normal AR-15. It's very easy to actuate. I do kind of wish that from the factory, it would come so I could have it. From the factory, I do wish that it was ambi. That way, when I was taking those longer shots, I could select it with my thumb on this side. Uh, it isn't, I've kind of gotten used to it over time as I've been shooting this, but it's just kind of a little wish that I have. The grip is actually, I, I like it quite a bit. I know a lot of people have complained about the grip, but uh, the angle is really good for me and everything feels, um, good as far as that grip is concerned. I think the greatest thing when it comes to the Tavor is 100% the trigger. Triggers on bullpup rifles are typically, um, how would you describe them, Micah? Abysmal. Extremely poor. Uh, the stock trigger on the X95 is, is okay. It, it's not terrible. However, with the Geisley trigger pack um, that you can get, uh, you have an in incredible trigger. There's actually quite a few different triggers from different manufacturers that you can get, but uh, we have to talk about just like how good the Geisy trigger makes that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go set that uh, trigger together. So set that over to fire. So feeling into it, just a teeny bit of mush, very little take up. 
and you have maybe a three pound let off. Super, super smooth. Feeling that reset? Right on it and straight to that three pound let off. It is a very, very, very good trigger. Um, obviously the best bullpup trigger, but as far as even like a, a normal trigger would go, I would consider it ex extremely good. Like even on an AR-15, this would be a very good trigger. Kind of the main complaint I have for most bullpup rifles is the fact that the trigger is so terrible. So that already elevates the Tavor to a much higher position compared to every other bullpup out there, notwithstanding some of the weird, odd kind of quirks of this particular rifle. Now, with all that being said, kind of moving back here, we talked about this gun being completely ambidextrous where everything can be switched, whether it be the ejection port, whether it be the charging handle, and that's where you run into a few issues because the, uh, Micah hates it when I use this word, but these weapons are, are combat gas and they're, um, they're, they're very gassy rifles. So even without a suppressor on them, um, if you take a look in here, you can see all this white crud building up. That's typically something that I would see on, an, on an, like a, a Mark 18 that I suppressed and was firing thousands of rounds with. It's essentially a lot of that carbon bleed off, a lot of that um, kind of refuse and leftover waste from a suppressor firing. So seeing that on a rifle that's not being suppressed uh, is, is kind of very indicative of how gassy the weapon is. And in fact, even just firing it throughout the day, uh, I usually get black smudges all over my face. I'm just getting gassed out the entire time. So it is an oddly gassy design despite not even using a suppressor or anything like that. So the problem with that is, of course, that if this were sealed better on the left-hand side as a righty shooter, then you could uh, mitigate some of that gas. So a couple of different people have come up with, uh, with ways of sealing this up and kind of do-it-yourself stuff, and you can kind of seal a lot of it up, but you know, then the weapon's kind of not so ambient at that point because you've kind of sealed a lot of that stuff up. There are ways to kind of deal with it a little bit, but as it comes from the factory, it is definitely... Um, a, a much gassier rifle than you'd expect. It, it feels very much so like a uh, like a Mark 18 with a suppressor when you're shooting this thing, which is a little bit ridiculous in my mind. From there, we do have the uh, magazine well. It's not huge, it's not amazing. Uh, I think it could have a little bit more kind of flair to it to be able to insert a little bit easier. Um, it, it's not really a huge complaint for me. A lot of uh, bullpup fans will say how incredible bullpup is because of the fact that you have the weight all the way back here you have a very long barrel so you have a really good velocity um, and there are those are really good things on paper there are a couple of issues that you run into with the Tavor as you start kind of using it with kit and that's that when you're doing these reloads I have a very thin very low profile um, placard that we're making on right now uh, if you have any type of larger placard what ends up happening is you can see it right here, how close that back magazine's already getting to them. You begin to run into interference with your actual kit yourself. So when you're trying to do a reload and trying to hit onto that bolt release, sometimes it gets actuated by your kit. Sometimes it's really hard to reach it. Um, a lot of Israelis on certain of their weapons will end up just running the charging handle because they run into the same problem where their kit kind of interferes with them getting to the bolt release. So the bolt release is really good. It is really fast once you get to it. Again, that <clears throat> reload, when you actually do it, let's go ahead and lock that back right there. So when you drop that mag out, I mean, that is very fast. However, I found in practice when you're in cover, you're taking a knee, your kit's a little bit more bunched up, it ends up kind of not being nearly as smooth, unfortunately. Um, it is a good design. I really don't have a whole lot of qualms with it. It is just something you're gonna run into with bullpups. There's, there's no free lunch anywhere. And certainly when it comes to the X95, that is kind of one of the weak points, I think in my opinion, uh, as far as a manual of arms. Obviously it can be trained through. Um, you can set up your kit differently. Um, those are all considerations that kind of help you uh, mitigate those issues. And certainly I do have training scars when it comes to this gun from running an AR-15 and a more traditional weapon for so long, uh, but it's something I want to uh, point out, I suppose. Overall, the Tavor has all the normal quirks that I've talked about with bullpups, uh, from reloads to the way it kind of handles to the way it sits in your shoulder with your kit and everything. But what really sets it apart from other bullpups and makes it among the best, if not the best, is the trigger and the recoil impulse. It is a very smooth operating weapon. Um, the trigger makes it incredible, in my opinion. If they would fix 
I say fix, if they would make the gas system compatible with suppressors out of the box from the factory, I think we wouldn't just have one of the best bull pups, but we'd actually have a really good fighting rifle. So the Tavor is just about there. I'm going to be honest and say I don't think that it's something that I would get as like a first rifle. If you want to have a X95, if you want a bullpup, certainly it's high on the list. Otherwise, if you're just trying to get a rifle just for something to have, um, I would recommend a more traditional AR-15 uh, in every way. Otherwise, just about there. But here's the thing, guys. As cool as these guns are, as cool as the Tavor is, the fact of the matter is if you don't train on it, if you don't actually use it, it's not going to matter. So get out there, get training. Tons of great places to get training from. Haley Strategic, Pat McNamara, obviously Onward Research as we start our own stuff. Get out there, train, actually shoot with your shit. And as always, guys, we are so thankful to you guys for watching. Stay tuned. Tons more great things coming. Got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Read a book. Not the internet, not like forums, but an actual book. Get out there, expand your knowledge, read. The knowledge is, is free. The you know, the elites don't want you to know it, but you can have as much as you want. So get out there, read, be deliberate with your time, and it's going to pay dividends. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I've got nothing else for you.